What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Max Torres with Scoop Duck. Make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, you can hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload something new. And if you feel so inclined, make sure to go ahead and drop us a like. It really helps out the channel. Today, I wanna to talk about 2021 Oregon quarterback commit Ty Thompson out of Arizona. He's a name that the Duck fans are well acquainted with at this point. He committed to the Ducks back in March. He committed the Ducks over some big name schools, including Michigan State, Miami, and Louisville. If we're looking at the 247 Sports composite rankings, he is rated the number seven pro style quarterback and the number one prospect in Arizona. He's rated 0.9644, and that brings him in at the number 80 player in the entire country. And many people, uh, leading experts, are saying that he could be in line for a ratings bump after this performance in Tennessee. So that's what I want to get to in this video. He traveled to Nashville these past couple days to compete in the Elite 11, which is a competition, for those of you that don't know, that brings together the top quarterbacks in the entire country to battle for the title of the top quarterback, the best of the best. That's what really makes this event special. If we're looking at other notable names in the competition. We saw Miller Moss out of Southern California, who is a USC commit, as well as Brock Vandegrift, who is a Georgia commit, and a name that everybody knows, Caleb Williams, who did go home with the MVP award. He is looking to decide in the next couple of days here between Maryland, LSU, and Oklahoma. Personally, I think he's gonna end up at Oklahoma, but that is why it's fun to watch the recruiting process play out. Many people were commenting about Ty Thompson's performance at the event. He took home the Alpha Dog Award, and 247 Sports had him rated as the top-ranked quarterback after the event, even though he didn't win the MVP award. So I wanna get into an interview that I had with Ty Thompson uh, after the event to learn about his experience at the event and talk about the competition. Enjoy the video. All right, joining me now is four-star 2021 Oregon quarterback commit Ty Thompson, fresh off of an Elite 11 performance in Nashville. Ty, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing well, thank you. All right, awesome. Well, the first, the first thing I want to get into, um, you know, obviously this is a, a big, big moment for you uh, being a quarterback. What was the experience like, you know, going to Nashville and competing in the Elite 11? Uh, it was definitely unforgettable. Um, it was amazing going there, um, staying with um, some of the best quarterbacks in the nation, competing with them for three days, um, getting to learn from the best coaches in the nation, um, you know, in history pretty much. Um, you know, I learned a whole lot. It was a whole lot of fun, um, competed and did well. So I'm very, very happy with the experience and I'll you know, never forget it for sure. Yeah, you, you mentioned that there were, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of great coaches there. I know Trent Dilfer is one of the, the main organizers there. Um, Tell us some of the other coaches that were there and maybe um, some of your big takeaways or pieces of advice that you uh, were able to take away from it. Yeah, Coach Gerard Johnson was there. He did a good job um, you know, coaching us. Coach Craig Nall was there. Um, Coach George Whitfield um, did a really good job um, not only you know, coaching us on the field but off the field, teaching us you know, about um, – he went into depth with you know, all the racial injustice and um, using our platform and stuff like that. He's a really solid guy about – um, you know, very passionate about that kind of stuff. Um, very happy, you know, with the conversations we had with him, um, as well as Joey Roberts, Brian Stump, you know, the people um, that really made it happen were, you know, very influential on that whole thing. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely <clears throat> definitely a, a great learning experience for uh, any quarterback that's able to go. Um, you know, I think it's also really interesting to see, kind of like you mentioned, uh, athletes using their uh, their voice and their platform to to bring about um, change, especially now with everything that's going on in the country. So um, I'm glad that you, you know, were able to have a whole bunch of different takeaways from, from the event. And it seems like also, you know, realize that it's, it's more than, it's more than just football, more than sports. So that, that's great to hear. Um, I want to talk, you know, a little bit more about, about your performance. Um, you got the alpha dog award and 24 seven sports uh, had you listed as, you know, the top performer. Uh, tell me a little bit more about how you felt you performed and, you know, the competition? I feel like I did very well um, all three days. I feel like um, I'm very proud of, my, proud of my performance and happy with how I, um, you know, made, my, made myself known a little bit, kind of stepped out of the out of the lower of the rankings and, you know, proved myself to a few other people. 
Um, I feel like the competition was great. You know, all the other quarterbacks were best I've seen ever. Um, best quarterbacks I've ever thrown with um, by far. Um, but they're also great guys. So I'm happy to leave there with <clears throat> a few of the relationships that I've built and, uh, you know, hopefully some lifelong friends for sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I think that's one of the coolest parts about the recruiting process is you get to meet people from, from all over the country, especially with the Elite 11, you know, drawn from all areas. Um, I think it's really cool, you know, after talking to you, uh, you definitely kind of strike me as like a soft-spoken kind of guy, but then, you know, your, your play just speaks, you know, volumes, which is really cool. Um, is there a particular drill or event uh, in the Elite 11 competition that you felt the most comfortable with or you think best showcased your skills as a quarterback? Um, I feel like day one, I was the most comfortable, um, you know, just going through drills and um, they were teaching us, you know, quick game, um, play action stuff, intermediate throws, throwing on the run, um, pocket movement, stuff like that. That's pretty much, you know, my element, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then the, the pro day, I was very comfortable as well. Um, had a whole lot of fun there, pretty fairly successful. Um, and then the target practice was a little bit out of my comfort zone, uh, a little bit, little bit different than what I'm used to. Um, but I still feel like I did, did fairly well on that as well. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw some videos of you doing the the target practice. So that's you know not not an easy one to do, but by any means. Um, but you know, speaking on your skill set a little bit, I'm sure a lot of people are interested. Um, since you are going to Oregon and you have your decision made, um, is there a particular piece of your game that you think projects the best or fits the best with the Oregon uh, play, play style and kind of what Joe Moorhead has planned for you? Um, what Coach Joe Moorhead, Joe, Coach Moorhead really has um, put in is an offense that doesn't have one specific kind of play style that flourishes. It's really a, a very dynamic offense, and I'm very happy that I'm – um, going into such a special offense, um, I'll be able to utilize my legs that I feel like I'm comfortable using, and um, you know, expo be explosive outside of the pocket, stuff like that. Um, but also make make plays from the from you know, throwing from the pocket as well, um, RPO stuff, drop back stuff, everything. So I feel like um, with the offense that Coach Moorhead's putting in, um, every bit of my you know comfort zone, every bit of my talent will be utilized for sure. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think it'll. It's really awesome to see. Uh, you know, quarterbacks with a complete skill set. And I think you're, you know, a more interesting prospect since you are, you know, pretty mobile, but you can make all the, all the big time throws that everyone's looking for. Um, I think a lot of people, when they look at the Elite 11, you know, they get really caught up in the rankings and, you know, everybody who goes wants to win. They, you know, they advertise that, you know, the breakdown was 50% uh, junior film, 50%, you know, performance. Um, what, what did, I'm curious to know, what did they tell you about how that breakdown was going to go and what do you think is fair in your mind? Uh, I feel like they did the best job that they could. They made it crystal clear from the beginning that it was 50% um, your, your junior field and what you did um, during the season and then 50% how you did during the camp um, because obviously there are some people that do better during the season with pads on. There's some people that do better in a camp setting. So I feel like that's 100% fair um, with that you know, part, portion of it. Um, I feel like they've done a really good job um, grading all the quarterbacks. I feel like the rankings were very fair and everything. I, what everyone got, um, you know, was, was very fair. And um, Caleb Williams is for sure um, very fitting to, to win the MVP. I'm very happy that, you know, if someone didn't – if I didn't get it, I'm very happy that he got it for sure. Great, great. Yeah, I, I'm, I, like, I like the humility there. Um, one interesting point that you mentioned is, you know, some people excel more with the pads on and then there's other – um, aspects of your game that maybe you're uh, more apparent when you don't have pads on as a quarterback you know you've gone to a bunch of camps and you've obviously played high school ball is there I'm curious to know is there something that you think is easier with or without pads what's that comparison like for you I think there's certain things as far as movement um, you know throwing on the run kind of stuff like that where you um, really disassociating your hips and your shoulders and kind of with the rotation stuff like that um, that's a lot easier without pads on in the camp setting. Um, but, you know, and, and if you're able to do that in the game and um, showcase that skill in the game as well, it's, you know, very um, high attribute that you can, you know, claim to have. So um, I feel like that's probably one of the most difficult things to do in a game. Um, but it's a lot easier, you know, with pad, with, without the pads on. Okay, cool. Yeah, d definitely interesting to see kind of how – people change. I'm sure it's a lot easier to move without, you know, the extra weight of the pads weighing you down. Um, one thing that I think would be uh, interesting to know is uh, a lot of, not every quarterback, but most of the quarterbacks I think that were there 
uh, are committed to a school, uh, unless I'm mistaken. But you've gone to plenty of events, um, recruiting circuits and stuff um, as a recruit. What was it like for you to be able to go to this event, being committed to Oregon, and know that you're representing, you know, Coach Cristobal and you know the Oregon Duck football program? Um, it's really it makes it more special. You, you see the the fans on the live or commenting on your posts or whatever, um, showing a whole lot of support. I'm very happy with um, my choice in Oregon and, and the fan base that's backed me up through the whole through the whole process. So um, the last three days, I've got nothing but love from all the fans. I'm very happy that I can re represent a great school, a great coaching staff, a great program uh, like Oregon um, in, in the fashion that I did in the last three days. Yeah, I know uh, fans are, are super excited to, to see you um, play for Oregon. They're a, a pretty loud fan base. Is there um, a, a particular you know aspect of a fan base or the Oregon fan base that you think makes them uh, the most special in, in your eyes? I think they're, they're really um, – how I say they're, they're first of all they're not crazy you know psycho people that are gonna go and uh, make fools of themselves on social media and make um, kind of impact the way I look based on their comments on my posts or comments about other people. I'm very happy with how you know intelligent and um, thoughtful they are usually with all their with their other comments and support and stuff like that. Um, as well as they're they're extremely supportive um, no matter how how well I do or how poorly I do, they, they will always have my back. And so um, probably the most loyal fan base out there for sure. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people, you know, I've, I've obviously follow a lot of recruits and, um, you know, all kinds of schools. It's, it's crazy how, you know, uh, these, some of these fans literally attack players if they, you know, don't go to their school or they have some post. And I mean, these people really just need a wake up call and they got to remember that you guys are your kids at the end of the day. Um, and you're just trying to live your dream playing football. So I'm, I'm glad you, you know, feel accepted by the fan base. That's awesome. Um, so we've talked a lot about, you know, how the event went. Um, one thing I'm curious to know, uh, this is, you know, the, the most recent, you know, live sports that we've seen uh, during a pandemic uh, that we're all going through. Um, were there any kind of, you know, safety precautions that were, that were taken there? And, you know, what was the process like with you talking with your family to make that decision to fly from Arizona all the way to Tennessee to perform? Yeah, they made it very clear from the beginning that we were going to be um, very different from all the other years. It was only three days instead of well, the usual five or six days. Um, we had a room to ourselves um, versus having a roommate like usual. Um, and, and they made it uh, very, you know, a, a huge priority to, to keep ourselves distance and with masks. And um, every time we got on the bus, we had to put hand sanitizer on. They temperature checked us every morning. Um, everything, yeah, I feel like went very smoothly as far as um, the safety of the players and uh, the parents and everybody that was out there. So um, they did a very good job compensating for the, the situation at hand. Um, and I felt nothing but safe, you know, flying and, you know, being in their hands for the last three days. Okay, great. Yeah, that's, you know, health, health is the, the biggest uh, priority for any, everybody right now, I feel like. Um, and then, you know, taking a look closer to home, I know we've seen Arizona kind of see a, a recent spike in cases. I'm curious to know, um, what's it like right now with you and your high school with regards to trying to resume football activities? What are the coaches telling you and how are you feeling about the situation? Um, so about three or four, four weeks ago, we had actually started practice. We had to slowly but surely, you know, graduate into um, full-on practice with the ball and throwing and everything. Um, we started off with just conditioning, and then we could um, start throwing and, you know, being a little bit closer to each other. Um, but then this, I think, Monday, um, Governor, the Governor Doug Ducey closed everything back down for 30 days, um, which is because of the outbreak, how, you know, um, unsafe it is to be in Arizona right now as far as with coronavirus. So, um, it's, it's, well, as far as right now, um, practice is canceled for the next 30 days or 28 or whatever days. Um, but you know, we still try to do our best to get out and, um, throw with each other, you know, off the records and stuff like that with other coaches and without organizing stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. In interesting to see, you know, kind of every state's handling it differently. Um, you know, no one's ever really had to deal with anything like this before. Um, so we're all just kind of doing our best to get back to it. Um, so don't want to talk about that too much because, um, you know, that's kind of a Debbie Downer type of deal. But I, I do – I am interested to get, you know, 
athletes' thoughts on what's going on uh, with the situation we're all finding ourselves in. Um, got a couple more for you, and then uh, I'll let you out of here. You, you're always an awesome to interview. So one thing that I'm interested to see your opinions on, um, if we look at Oregon and you know their team situation, you got Justin Herbert, first round uh, draft pick, you know one of the best players in program history. You know we're we're going to see you know who, we're still waiting to see who's going to be the the starter, um, Tyler Shuck or um, Anthony Brown. What is it like to you? What's your mindset? You know, if you were to step foot on Oregon, to step foot on campus tomorrow uh, with that competition and, you know, the depth that they have at quarterback position, what's your mindset going to be once you get to Eugene? Um, I, I would just um, buy, buy into the system, uh, learn the offense as fast as I can and be able to um, be, be sufficient, you know, keep hold my own in that, in that area first um, and then just put my head down and work. Um, whatever Coach Moorhead, you know, has my role as, I'll, I'll, I'll work with that role, whether it's, you know, scout team or whether it's um, third string and I've got to get extra work after practice to, to elevate my game or whether it's um, having a chance to, to go in and play. Um, you know, whatever my role is at the, at the time, I'm going to buy and all into that, um, make sure I'm working as hard as I can to, to elevate my game for sure. That's great. It really sounds like you have a, a team first mentality, which I think is, you know, something they want to see in, in any quarterback. Um, with regard to Joe Moorhead, now that you have had this competition take place, um, a lot of it was, you know, recorded. So there's going to be film. Has he talked to you uh, at all about, you know, hey, let's let's get together on Zoom and, you know, break down, you know, what how this went. Um, have there been any conversations like that about, you know, just working on the X's and O's and, trying to coach you up even though you're not out of working yet? Yeah, actually, you had a Zoom. I, I had a Zoom with the coaches this morning. Um, we talked about how everything went and um, kind of gave me a few pointers and stuff like that about um, my performance and stuff like that. So um, I feel like it's the, the next time I visit, we'll definitely have a better opportunity to sit down and break down um, everything, you know, X's and O's wise as far as learning the offense and learning football, which um, one-on-one -on -one with me and him whenever that opens up. Um, but, yeah, we had actually a conversation today as far as, you know, coaching me up through this week. So very, very excited about that. That's awesome. Well, hey, um, look, looking forward to it to see, you know, how you can take your game to the next level. I, I know uh, people came away really impressed with your performance in uh, Nashville. So congratulations on uh, all your uh, accolades and, you know, your performance at the Elite 11. And I'm sure Duck fans are – are really pleased with it. So thank you so much for taking the time to join me, Ty. Um, stay well, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate your time. All right, folks, there you have it. That was the latest with Oregon quarterback commit Ty Thompson after his stellar performance out there at the Elite 11 in Nashville, Tennessee. I got to say, you know, after taking a deep dive into this guy's film, he can really make every throw that you can ask for a quarterback. He's got phenomenal feet really good at improvising. You can definitely tell that there's plays designed for him where he snaps the ball and just bolts out of the pocket, but it's really an area where he excels. Super, super excited to see this guy in the green and yellow for the Ducks. So that's a huge, huge pickup for them. Uh, and they're gonna, they're gonna need to do their work to make sure that they keep him in the fold. That'll do it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Always appreciate your support. If you wanna see more videos like this one, Head on over to the rest of our videos here on the channel where I talk to 2021 Oregon football recruits as well as commits. You don't want to miss out on any of that. If you're not already following me on Twitter, go ahead and give me a follow at mTourist Sports. I'll link the social media to the rest of our team in the description below and go over to scoopduck.com to check out our written content. You can find my tourist estate there as well. That's all we have for this one. Hope you guys are staying safe during this quarantine and these weird times. Uh, I'm Max Torres and I'll see you in the next video.